Hello my friends, I'm Peter Gifford and this is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. It's another video about board games, tabletop games, all types of games. I absolutely love them as long as they've got lots of theme and they're exciting and immersive and fun. Today, talking about theme, what's the classic, the classic board gaming theme? Dungeon crawling, of course. I've got so many dungeon crawlers, I'm surrounded by dungeon crawlers. And it's funny, it's one of those things that is so popular in the gaming world, but everybody keeps going back to some old favorites. They're sort of held up as being the most incredible dungeon crawlers that were ever made. And they were, of course, Hero Quest and Advanced Hero Quest and Warhammer Quest. Lots of things with Quest in them. They were really, really popular. And Year after year, we see people coming up with variations on this theme, hopefully coming up with the ultimate dungeon crawler. Well, is this the ultimate dungeon crawler? I don't know because I haven't played it yet, but I am about to unbox it here. It's called League of Dungeoneers. Oh, it's so big, I can't even lift the box. It's huge. Hold on. Oh, that is really heavy. <laughs> I'm expending a lot of energy to do that. Now you can see the box doesn't even fit because there's a lot of cardboard components in here and presumably when they're all punched out of their um, cardboard frames, they'll all fit back in the box. But as you can see, it's huge. This is the core box. There's some expansions coming as well. League of Dungeoneers, I hear you ask. What's that? Well, I didn't know anything about it, but it was a successful Kickstarter that ran recently. And I've got some notes here. It had 4,402 backers and raised 471,187 euros. That's uh, pretty successful for a game that, you know, not a lot of people knew about. Actually, however, it did start as a print and play version. Michael Lundsted is a guy from Sweden and his uh, publishing company is called Von Braus Publishing. Um, but he created this print and play game just for his own enjoyment and for that of his friends. And it was quite successful. And so a lot of people said, well, why don't you make a board game version? And amazingly, he took on the huge job of doing it. He also sent me this game because I didn't know anything about it. He contacted me and said, would you like to check out the League of Dungeoneers? And I said, sure, fine, send it along. And it's just arrived today. So. I've said all that, now let's get into showing you what you get in the box. League of Dungeoneers, let's open it up. And you can see it's absolutely bursting with stuff. Now there are a few extras in this one of course. Um, we've got a nice uh, mouse mat material thing and we've got some metal coins and some 3D doors in here. But this isn't a game packed full of miniatures. It uses standees, cardboard standees, illustrated ones. So, uh, you know, you're not going to see gazillions of miniatures here, which, you know, from my perspective is great because I don't have to do any more painting. I've got so many things to paint, it's insane. I'm surrounded by them. So I'm really pleased it's just standees. And it's a nice change because, you know, obviously that makes it cheaper and more affordable for people. So, mouse mat. And this looks like the area that you'll be adventuring over. It's a very nice mat, very old school. Now, I'll use the expression old school a lot, probably, because we're talking dungeon crawling. And when you say old school, you're talking about that classic sort of Dungeons and Dragons, going down into the dungeon, killing monsters, getting treasure kind of thing. So I think that applies here. Also, this is a production by a one-man company, pretty much. Um, he's had some help writing some of the scenarios, and obviously the artwork is done by other people. But it's pretty much the creation of one guy, which I think is pretty astonishing, considering the fact that, let's face it, Hasbro just did this huge campaign to re-release Hero Quest. And, you know, the resources that that company has. And here's one guy who can pretty much do something just as impressive. Um, so, anyway, let's have a look. So, we've got some dungeon tiles. Now, of course, this is really important because you're going to be staring at these tiles a lot. And they look rather nice. They're kind of simple and we've got some dead adventures on them, which is always nice. They're double-sided, of course. And one thing I immediately notice is that they're quite bright. They're not all sort of grim and dark, which is very much the fashion these days. And that sort of gives me that kind of old school feel um, when they're not quite so grim. But uh, look, there's some interesting stuff. That's got some kind of 
mummy um, coffins on it, sarcophagi. Very much reminds me of the old Warhammer Quest, but that's the idea. Now I have a copy of Warhammer Quest. I haven't played it since it was released. I bought it when it first came out, and I don't think I've played it since. Um, the thing that always struck me at the time, it was funny because they were trying to have a dungeon crawler that used all of the Citadel miniatures. So the actual game only came with like Skaven and some men at arms. That was about it. And then it had a book which was full of all the stats of just about every fantasy creature you could possibly imagine. Of course, you had to go back and buy all the miniatures from Citadel to use them. Um, these are just falling out of the, the uh, frames, which I love to see. Nicely cut. Yeah, and I like these. They're just, it's got a nice feel. There's heaps. And then, then we've got standees. So these, wow, there's a lot of cardboard here. So here you go, illustrated um, characters and monsters and things. And I think this is kind of refreshing. It'll be fun to play a dungeon crawler without miniatures for a change. And as I said, I don't have to paint them, which is great. Look at them all. There are so many. Hello, there's a, like a Balrog type thing. Wow. Very nicely illustrated. There's so many. Check them all out. Wow. Now, I just got an email from Michael, actually. And he told me that um, this is missing... Um, a couple of uh, token sheets. He said there's enough tokens to use for the game, but there was extra uh, that didn't get in it, into these copies that went out to uh, YouTubers and things like that. So they're going to be in the final game to backers, so no problem there, but he's going to send me those extra, but they're just extra counters, so they're not crucial. Wow. Oh, there's a lot of cardboard here. And we've got some more dungeon tiles. See some different colours. Wow, just very nicely cut. They're just falling out. Got a bit of a purple theme going on here. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're really nice, aren't they? Look at that. That's quite impressive. I like that one. These are very nice. Wow. Oh, you've got your classic sort of river of fire there with the bridge over it. That's always a classic. Um, wow, they just go on and on. This is a very generous amount of tiles. Look at that. So much work illustrating all these. Wow. Okay. Well, you get the idea. There's more and more. Got a huge room there. That looks great. It's like a lounge, isn't it? Is that a bedroom? It's a pretty comfortable bedroom. There's a bed up there. Then we've got a lot of wooden doors. Now, as I said, this copy comes with 3D doors. But if you didn't get the 3D doors, you can use those. They're very much like the old Hero Quest ones. Uh, here's some counters. So there's probably another sheet or two of these for extra. Okay, what do we got here? It looks like we've got some wilderness areas to fight on. Some nice big sheets. These are a thinner material, but they're just single large areas. There's a village. Again, the, oh, look, a bit of a field, ploughed field. Another Egyptian field there. The artwork is really nice. These would be really handy if I was playing a ro fantasy role-playing game. Just pop one of these out when there's a battle. They're great. Very impressive. It's like, it's like an excellent role-playing game supplement as well. Now you've got a, a hard copy or a board copy of that same map, which is rather nice. You know, it's, I wonder if the, the other map is necessary because this one looks great. But, you know... Horses for courses. So, we've got more stuff here and we've got a whole lot of dungeon doors and they either come in an open configuration like so. Just very nice. Or we've got some closed ones here. Good big solid dungeon doors. You could use those for so many games I've got. 
Now let me move that because I've just got a bit of light reflecting on that and that can be annoying for you. Okay, so heaps of those doors, you can see there's just lots and lots. There's a whole lot of very nice little bags, Dungeoneers. Oh look, this one's kind of a sort of vinyl fake leather thing. That's very nice. And uh, we've got a, one of these, which I've always wanted one of these. It's one of these little dice trays, um, which I see lots of people use. And I believe these fit together like this genius construction. And there we have it. Look at that little dice tray. Great. That is very neat. That's got Dungeoneers written on it, but very subtly. Um, that's going to be very handy. This uh, version also comes with sleeves, heaps of sleeves, which is great. And then we've got uh, so many standee stands, which is very generous. And there's some very large ones as well, got those. These are some like plastic markers. I'm not sure what they're used for, but they're plastic, which is pretty funky. And I love metal coins. Never get sick of metal coins. Oh wow, and they're all they're in different denominations too. Look at those. I love the sound of metal coins in a game. It's really good. So you really feel like you're getting some treasure when you get those. Uh, we've got some wooden counters and of course some dice. Now we've got a 12-sided percentiles, six, yep, all your classic sort of role-playing type dice there. That's that tray. Lots and lots of bags, which is great. And then we come, as you can see, gazillions of cards. Now we've got some sheets here. These are sort of party morale, uh, heroes, health, energy, sanity. Uh, there's a treasure table like this. Uh, dungeon exploring, lots of tables, of course, for this kind of thing. Um, there's some pads of sheets. These all look like fighters. Oh, there's a whole pad of that sheet as well. So that other one was obviously a dry erase sheet. So you can use a dry erase marker to use, or you can use a sheet like that. Um, this looks like a campaign, the Dark Pyramid. Um, there are a couple of campaigns. I'm not sure how many campaigns. I know there's at least two, but there's probably more. And you can see there are no maps. So it's obviously a random map generation system. And really, I know nothing about the rules yet. I haven't read them yet. Um, but you can rest assured there will be an Esoteric Order of Gamers rules and reference sheet for this game. Bestiary, so a whole book on all the monsters. And it looks like there are monster cards as well, but there's a whole lot of information on them in here. Just an astonishing amount of work for one guy. It's quite incredible. Uh, Companions, this is an extra as well, I think, uh, which talks about, we've got mercenaries, uh, lots of different characters, backer mercenaries, generic mercenaries, mm. dogs, whole section on dogs, familiars, there you go. Quest book two, I don't know what happened to quest book one, but here's quest book two. Shock is full of info, not a whole lot of art, but you know, that's fair enough because this isn't, you know, a huge uh, team. This is just mostly one guy. There we go. Uh, quick reference compendium. There's so much in here. Look at it. There's a, lots of tables, alchemy, spells, power stones, magic items, legendary items, dungeon events. Wow. And then, really impressed with this, a hardcover book at the bottom. So a big hardcover rule book. My goodness, check it out. A little bit more art, um, but wow, there's so much here. And let's, let's just have a look. We've got in the contents. So there is a kingdom. There's a background sort of material, um, kingdom to the whole thing. Game basics, uh, party management, uh, character creation, equipment, psychology, embarking on your first quest, leveling up. Academic skills, magic, alchemy, prayers, enchantments, dungeoneering and combat into the dungeons. Uh, treasure, combat, of course, your combat section, traveling and skirmishes, 
Wow, so much in that section. It's incredible. Look, horse racing, racing, guilds, gambling, fortune teller, enchant items, learn a spell or prayer, magic, create magic scrolls. Wow. Buying an estate. <laughs> it's certainly a campaign. Um, oh, quest book one is in the back of this. There you go. Campaign, the dead rising and campaign lair of the spider queen. So quest book two is separate. Random quests, the lava river, the bandits hideout, the fountain room, the chamber of reverence, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's pretty impressive stuff. This is a guy who must have really enjoyed Warhammer Quest when he was young. Then we've got a heap of cards. And I won't go through them all because there are so many. Um, now, the only thing, when I saw these, Obviously, you know that I'm very critical when it comes to graphic design because that's what I do for a living. So I'm always very picky about it. And this is sort of on the, I don't want to use the word amateurish, but you know, it's on the less fancy side graphic design wise. It's, they're pretty plain as you can see. Um, there's no, is there an artwork? No, there's no artwork of the creature on them. So they're very sort of straight text based. So, um, but really, I suppose, you know, when you look at the original uh, Warhammer Quest and those ones, they weren't too fancy either. They were done in the 80s. Um, so this is, you know, it's kind of retro in that in that way. Um, but again, this isn't a huge production team. Um, it's one guy realising his dream. So a gazillion cards here. Wonderful treasure, ingredients, lamp oil. So yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not excited about the graphic design style by any means. It's pretty straight. It's used that same textured background on absolutely everything. Um, and it's very much just, you know, text and picture on that side. But uh, what about the gameplay? Well, I have to tell you, we've got spells here. I don't know yet. Travel event, uh, exploration, mercenaries, more exploration, traps. Uh, some reference cards, spell cards, whew, armor, heaps of cards. Wow! As you can see, this is a pretty huge dungeon crawler. It's very impressive. I'm particularly impressed by this huge hardcover book. I've got a lot of reading to do and I've got to try this out. It's for, excuse me that I keep going like this, but it's very hot in here and I'm just wiping a bit of sweat away. Um, and I've, how many players? I've forgotten. Here it is. Um, Yes, one to four players, so you can play it solo if you wish. It says 90 to 180 minutes, but obviously you can do huge campaigns, uh, 14 plus. So I'm going to um, give this a go with two players and see how it goes. Um, but the great thing is, as I said, don't have to paint your figures. Yay, I'm just going to get out the standees and put them in. Or maybe I, I might have some figures lying around that can stand in for some of these. Um, but... I'm hoping this is going to be, you know, a pretty straightforward dungeon crawling system. We roll some dice and you have some fun, kill some things and get some treasure, because that's what it's all about. Um, I'm really impressed with the production values of the tiles and all that. The cards are a little bit less impressive, but you know, that's fine. Um, I can see he's done justified text too, which I just really don't like. See so when you justify the text, oh, has he justified? Yeah, he has. Yeah, that's, that's just a personal bugbear of mine, graphic design bugbear. I prefer um, left justified text rather than fully justified text. I'll talk to you about that one day. I'm, you'll be fascinated, I'm sure, to learn all about my thoughts on text over 30 years of graphic design. Anyway, <laughs> thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've been excited by this look at the League of Dungeoneers. As I said, I knew nothing about it and I'm pretty impressed. And uh, thank you, Michael, for sending me a copy. I'm looking forward to giving it a go. And of course, when I do give it a go, I'm going to be doing a review on this channel. So you can find out what I think of the League of Dungeoneers. And I'm going to do a rules and reference sheets too, uh, a sheet as well. And I'm not going to reference this entire book, just the basic rules. Um, and so you can get into your dungeoneering adventures quickly and easily. That's it, folks. Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. Please subscribe, hit all notifications, check me out on social media, have a look at my Patreon page. Uh, what else is there? I think that's about it. So much to keep track of when you're doing game content creation these days. I will see you next time. Go and check out the website. That's the main thing. It's got all the stuff there. 430-something uh, rules and reference sheets for all the games you love to play. Bye for now, and good gaming, or I should say... Good dungeon crawling.